ha 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 Han Solo is thinking of getting married. Trioculus has found his queen. But the father of Jabba the Hutt is about to shatter their plans. The battle to defeat the forces of the evil Galactic Empire rages on. Throughout the vastness of space, heroic men, women, and aliens of the Rebel Alliance fight valiantly to keep alive the hopes for freedom and to restore the ways of the Old Republic with its wise Senate and noble line of Jedi Knights. But a feud between two powerful villains may prove disastrous to the Alliance. Trioculus is determined to steal away Princess Leia from Han Solo and make her his Dark Queen. But when Jabba the Hutt's father, Zorba, returns to Tatooine and learns that his son died at Leia's hand, Zorba takes off to Cloud City and prepares for Zorba the Hutt's Revenge. <laughs> Padawan Library 2020 Galactic Senate Draft. Let's get ready for democracy! <laughs> if you're listening at home, use the hashtag, hashtag Senate Draft. I'm Levi Paratic. With me is my co host, Tim May. Say hello. Hey. <laughs> and joining us, our resident Jedi Prince expert, <laughs> Stolen Data Tapes, Dan May. What's up? Hey, Dan. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm great. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Oh, you're more than welcome. All right. Well, uh, before we get, we have, we got the draft and we we're talking Jedi Prince. Big episode. Yep. Zorba the Hutt's Revenge. Yeah. Jedi Prince uh-huh. 3. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> before, the... we, uh, get, that, a, um, uh, th- big, uh, before we get into that, there's a, there was a big news story last night that we should address quickly. Uh, yes. Um, I, uh, the, uh, we literally just heard the news about Iger stepping down. We have no clue why or what that is. So if, if you're what, if there, that blows up into some huge story and we didn't talk about it, that's why, uh, by Friday, I mean, so, cause it's Tuesday today. So anyway, uh, but regardless, last night, uh, they announced this big high Republic initiative that mm-hmm. they've been teasing. And uh, there's a trailer with a bunch of writers talking about what they're going to do. And it actually, it seems kind of cool to me. So Yeah, it does. I'm a new Claudia Gray novel, so I'm excited about that. So. Yeah, and there's uh, technically a book we can read for the show. We'll see on that. If we <laughs> feel like it at the time, depends on where we're at. Um, you think they're setting up for a movie? Potentially, but I, I think it's just, I think it's a pretty interesting period. Like, when they first, the name High Republic first, like, kind of leaked. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be, like, basically just the Old Republic, but 200 years before Phantom Menace is, like, a pretty interesting period, and it seems pretty different and distinct from anything that's really been done either in the either recently or even in the Legends timeline. So I'm actually pretty interested in it overall. Yeah, seems like it could be fun. Which I, book is the, um, the young adult one, the one uh, that we can read, junior I, novel? I don't have it up. Give me one oh, second. It... <laughs> What were you going to say, Dan? Oh, I was going to say that I really liked the uh, pitch that it was the Jedi Knights of the Round Table. I mm-hmm. really thought that was cool. I'm a big Arthurian legend and uh, medieval fantasy slash medieval history head. So uh, <laughs> I, I I really like that kind of stuff. So uh, that looked pretty exciting to me. And I liked a lot of like, concept art for the books yeah. as well. Yeah, the in, concept in, art's good. 
in the trailer there's a one part where they're talking about like how like the republic hasn't like extended to some parts of the galaxy yet and they're like it's like the old west and i'm like <laughs> we've never seen that before in star wars and i'm like hmm i don't know about that <laughs> i it also annoyed me in the trailer though Oh, some guy was just like, now that the Skywalker saga is coming to a close, oh, it's like, well, it's whatever. Been Scott, you, you mean when that happened? <laughs> they that happened have in to 2005. Whatever, they gotta follow the. I, I'm it's putting not. it out there. I'm not <laughs> buying that box set. I'm not buying that new Blu ray box set. No, obviously I'm not. <laughs> whatever. Get it. Jeez. God. Why are you so upset, Tim? <laughs> because why do we need to talk about the sequel trilogy every day of our lives? I'm tired of it. It just came out. <laughs> No, it didn't. It's 15 years old, it feels like already. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, uh, it's the, the book we could read for the show is called A Test of Courage. It's by Justina Ireland. Uh, she wrote something yeah, else. There, uh, she wrote... Um, did she... she oh, wrote, that Spark of the Resistance book, right? I think she? so. Ooh, I don't have that I book. Like I, that. I, I mailed but that book But I don't home, really so. blame anybody that had to write one of those, like... Mm-hmm leading up to one of the sequel trilogy movies because it was just they just had no leeway to do anything right. interesting so i'm not gonna even, whatever it's untested for me so and the writing was fine it was just not an interesting story um so there's that news we could talk a little clone wars a little bit because um i looked i oh. looked up remember how i was telling you they made a like a list of essential episodes uh on disney plus i've been going through that so it, oh, it's nice. 20 essential episodes from the entire... Yeah, I saw the list. It's like, it's not by any means even kind of complete, <laughs> I feel like. But... Yeah, it... Clone Wars is such an interesting show in general because I can't think of any show that I like that much that basically has a 50% good to bad episode <laughs> ratio. <laughs> It's true. It's half true. the episodes are trash, yeah, but the half are. that are good are really good. That's basically we were talking on the show that shark guy. You know who I'm talking about? That shark dude? Oh, yes. He's the worst. Oh, of course. <laughs> so oh, my bad. God. I hate that shark dude. <laughs> so, yeah. I The, the new, uh, the premiere, it was, it's uh, basically the, uh, there was an unfinished group of episodes that were published. Uh, published on StarWars.com mm-hmm. a few years ago, and it's basically just finished ver- a finished version of one of those. Okay. Uh, I thought it was uh, uh, pretty good, but not like it, it, if if anybody was getting super hyped for like a monumental Clone Wars, it's not that. It's just but a clone episode. It's it's not a bad one. It's pretty good, but like I and I'm you know I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to the Siege of Mandalore. That's the stuff that I'm really like mostly excited about. I would say, but I do think it would have been a little more judicious of them to not have the first episode of this new batch of episodes be called the bad batch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I think it's. Uh, you know, we'll see. It's not. Um, it's not my. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it wasn't like one of my favorite episodes, but I'm excited. The show's back, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season, uh, and finally having it wrapped. Does it up feel? Uh, does it feel so. like more advanced the animation, or does it feel just like Clone Wars? Like it's. It looks. It, it looks smoother. I it, like some of the designs look a little bit streamlined. Mm-hmm. It's not like. It, it, it's aesthetically very much in line with it with the original show, but it, it's basically like I'd say it's a little bit higher. Well, end. that's good. Um, that's good. I was I've been you know, I've it's... been cruising through that twenty essential episodes list just so I can be like watch this new season and maybe talk about it with you guys. Uh, but uh, I, I watched the episode where Darth Maul returns. We finally see Darth Maul, and that mm, episode yeah. looked especially terrible i don't know what it was but like the whole episode's in fog and everybody's real polygony and there's that snake character who's like leading savage oppressed through like the junkyard and he's like really terribly animated like oh, yeah. i don't know what was going on there but then they included i just watched the episodes with like the younglings going to uh ilum for their crystals and like that episode looked great so and those are in like practically the same season so 
That's the, yeah. That's another thing. Budget seems to be a fifty percent ratio <laughs> as well. Like the, the, there's an episode, and I don't know if you've seen it, Levi, but there's an episode where I can't even remember the plot of it, but it had to do with droids. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if three PO and R two were in it, but like the whole thing took place on this planet that was basically just a white expanse of nothing. <laughs> like it looked like the construct from the Matrix. It was so bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, you know. But listen, uh, I think that the hit rate on on this last season will probably be pretty strong. It's a, it's a limited amount of episodes. I think it's only thirteen right. or twelve, even. So it's uh, so I imagine we'll get a lot of good episodes. Uh, and, I wonder if there'll be uh, a single yeah. Jar Jar episode. I hope. Prob- I probably not, <laughs> but uh, I would guess. I hope it's nothing but Jar Jar episodes from here on in. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, all right, guys, you want to get yeah? Into let's the get Jedi into the draft. draft then? All right, so Dan has the first pick. We need to figure out who has the second and third is pick. Is Referee Brooke home? Uh, he is not home. Okay, all right. Uh, this is a well, then let, I didn't know we Dan needed can a referee. Flip a coin. Oh, let's go. Dan, flip a coin. Yeah, sure. Uh, you got one? Yeah. Uh, I thought I did. Oh, oh, here's one. Here's one. Oh, you found one? Good, good, good. good. Yeah, so, right, are you so gonna, what are you going to call in the air? Uh, let, I'll let Levi all call right. it so he can relax. All right. All right, Tails. The suspense. Heads. Oh. Heads. God. Oh. <laughs> so okay, so I got I'm, second pick. But that means that means he goes first, right. Dan goes first, I go second, you go third, and you get right. the fourth pick, and then it comes back to me, then to right. Dan. It's All a right. snake draft. All right, so, and again, five people... And then when once we've drafted our five people, we'll te- we have to tell everybody what our um, w- what our committee is is designed for, mm-hmm. who is the chair of the committee, and the uh, and divide the other four members of the committee into two subcommittees. Oh wait, so we're holding the names of our committees till the end. I mean, if you want to, we could do that. I think first, it, I, guess. I yeah. think it might be more fun if we all tell each other what our committees okay. are. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, you go first, Dan. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, my committee will be the special, uh, Senate task force for the regulation of dark science and cloning. <laughs> I was thinking the same reference. <laughs> That's oh. not my idea, but I was like, oh, the dark science and cloning committee. <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh, my, uh, I don't have a name. I gotta think of a name, but the, uh, it, it's, uh. A special uh, task force for uh, defining the parameters of the chancellor's office. Okay. So, uh, nice. Yeah. All right. And mine is uh, we are the committee for the legalization of spice. <laughs> it's a naturally occurring substance. There's no reason why there should be, uh, you know, prohibition of spice. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so. Very, very powerful and uh, harmful hallucinogen by most <laughs> accounts in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> All right, so uh, and we'll we'll split our committees into, like I said, at, at, at the end we'll split it into we'll have a chair of the committee and then two subcommittees of two uh, amongst the other four okay. members. So. Uh, starting with that, our first pick goes to Dan. All right. Um, well, uh, I better snap up uh, people that you might pick. So we're going to start off with Mon Mothma. Ooh. Dr- num- she knows how to lead. D- number one draft pick. The first draft pick, Mon Mothma. Very good. That makes that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Oh, boy. Okay, there's really three obvious number one picks, right? right? So I gotta say, though, mm, I gotta get a leader with a lot of experience and gives me a long run. You'll give me a long, long run. Uh, lasts just a bit longer than the other person, so I'm gonna go with Bail Organa from. Well, Oldham. very good. Alright, so, uh, yeah, that's the number two. Alright, well, for my number three pick, I'm going with the senator from Naboo, Sheev Palpatine. 
Oh, you oh motherfucker. my god. <laughs> and for the number... Honestly, disgraceful, pretty much. But yeah, okay. And for my number two pick, the senator from Alderan, Bale Antilles. Oh. <laughs> so you're going with an imperial senator. Maybe, so. maybe. We are the legalization right. oh, of Oh, that's spice. a question. That's What's... a question. Uh, are we allowed... Is it just... Galactic Senate, Republic Senate, or can we pick from the Imperial? There's also Senate? the Separatist Senate too. Well, I, 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 I thought we approved all. Okay, Senate all Senate. All, all right, we just want to clear that. Oh, up. all right, cool. Yeah, all right. Um, so yeah, well, it comes back to me, I guess. So I, I can't believe I'm getting this person, Padme Amidala, the Senator from Naboo. <laughs> The much better senator from Naboo, <laughs> I might add. Well, we got three senators from Naboo, so I would say eh, up in the air. There's only two senators. One of them is a representative. Okay, I see the Jar Jar is not eligible. Let's not. Let's okay, move on. all right, Dan. <laughs> all right. Um, well, since we can have people that have been members of the Imperial Senate, uh, then I'll take your pick's daughter, Leia Organa of Alderaan. Mm-hmm. Oh, good pick. Good pick. Uh, you get also the next pick, remember. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. All right, then, uh, well, I, I want somebody that is knowledgeable about scientific concepts uh, if I'm going to be regulating dark science. So I'm going to pick uh, an entrepreneur and engineer, uh, but also a senator Gideon Danu of Kuat. Oh. I <laughs> uh, he uh damn it. Despite uh his uh <laughs> Despite, he, was on, he was on my board. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy. But yeah, despite being uh, um, a, uh, this, a scion of uh, Kuwait Drav Yards, uh, pr- uh, later producer of Star Destroyers and an ally of uh, your guy, Sheev, <laughs> uh, he openly and vocally opposed Senator Palpatine and, or Chancellor Palpatine and his uh, constant grab for power, uh, even signing his name uh, to the uh, 2000 uh, Senator who opposed him uh, he many part of the delegation the delegation 2000, of 2000 of many of whom were arrested in the aftermath of order 66 as supporters of the so-called jedi rebellion yeah. um, and this is why you should be hosting the show and not us <laughs> what, uh, uh, speak for yourself my next pick is uh axmo the, uh. <laughs> the respectable Axmo from Malastar. Son of a bitch. Now, this guy, he's a classic <laughs> wonk, you know? He's noted for his delight in the bureaucratic minutia, and he's a prime example of the inefficiencies of the late form Galactic Congress. At least that is according to Wikipedia. <laughs> and so, um, remember, uh, Remember, he's the guy, he wanted a... Com- he agreed with Lot- Senator Lot Dodd of the Trade Federation that there should be a commission sent to investigate the Trade Federation's uh, nefarious dealings on Naboo so as to essentially stall... There is no uh, proof! There is no proof! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and this, of course, led to Padme's vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum. Uh, so... I feel like she's a good balance to Padme and Bale on this uh, issue. We, he's he's not quite like just a straight up like pro. Like I don't know if he'd necessarily be straight up pro Palpatine's uh, uh, expansion of power, for example. But he's uh, but he, he's at the very least he's probably a center right. I would guess on the political spectrum. All right, so. <laughs> all, right. all right, sounds good. All right, so I got Sheev and Bale, which we both know uh, uh, ran for the Chancellor election after the vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum, you know. Of course. Bale Antilles didn't get it, and he also was replaced by Bale Organa, another Bale, so, yeah, Senator. Um, So, but unrelated to that, for my next pick, I'm going to uh, pick a Senator who is known for... uh, 
sometimes coming at odds with the Jedi. He's not a big fan of the Jedi. He, uh, his, uh, he's been questioned by the Jedi before. He has questioned Jedi and even tried to persecute Jedi before. That's right. I'm talking about San Sauro from the Jedi Apprentice <laughs> and Jedi Quest series. Yes. This guy has had it out for the Jedi since day one. This... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm glad San Sauro was mentioned. Yes, I mean, All right, you've he, also... he's somebody who would benefit from spice. He's a shady dude, you know. Come on. Yeah, he seems to be pretty shady. He's got some shady dealings. He, he also seems like he needs to loosen up a little bit. So maybe he should take there... some spice. <laughs> oh wait, don't I get the next pick? All too? right. Yes, okay. you get the next. Pick. All right, and for my next pick, all right, hailing from the green planet, I pick. For my number four spot, Greblips. <laughs> God damn! Oh, no! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Greblips, of course, uh, oh. the uh, the same species as ET from the Steven Spielberg film ET, which of course stands for extraterrestrial. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in in this universe, Greblips is uh, from. Oh crap! I didn't write it down. I just wrote the Green Planet here. <laughs> he's from the Green Planet. That's where he's yes. from. That's that's. Come on. The same planet as E.T. and Botanicus, his yes. teacher, and everything. Yeah, so, and yeah, and E.T.'s on. friends, who I don't remember the names of any. I can't remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a delight. Oh. All right. The first, so, the first upset, well, a second upset of the of the draft right here, Greblips. Yeah, this, this is very eventful. So, let's see. <laughs> I've got to balance out. Oh, let's see. Um... I'm going to go with, ooh, I'm going to go with maybe the, the only truly suspicious person that I'm going to draft, Hallie Bertoni of Camino, huh. who uh, you might remember very, like, pro-Clone Army. There's a big Clone Wars arc where she, like, is accused of murder. Yes. Uh, uh but she's cleared of all charges, guys. So, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, but anyway, she, she's all about ramping up the war effort. She was able to defeat uh, Padme's bill to curb uh, clone production. So, uh, uh, so her and Padme are going to get into some good battles on this committee. Corporate and the goal, the goal of a committee, as you know, is to exist forever. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, now, Dan, I've been writing down our, our choices. Uh, you're only at three. Did you forget to take your second turn during your last pick? No, he did. Okay. He got the first pick, and then... Because the first person in the, the draft doesn't get two picks off. The right, but in his... Yeah, okay. he's going to oh, take his okay. fourth pick. All right, now. all right. It, it makes Never sense. Never mind, yeah. So he, it all yeah, makes you're sense. you're right. All yeah. right, sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Dan, you are... Yep. Yes. All right. Oh, you get your fourth and fifth picks right now. So pissed, so pissed. So Red Lips was my dude. He was going to be the director of my committee because you know he can because it's Spielberg spelled backwards. You know? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, so classic director. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, okay, all right. Uh, well, let's see. For man. All right, so all right, I got this. I got this. I'm gonna go with uh, Garm Bel Iblis, okay. uh, who, in case you didn't know, was introduced in Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy, specifically in Dark Force Rising. Uh, when he was introduced, he was no longer a senator, uh, but had been a senator back during the days of the Republic. He also was part of the delegation of 2000, and I. Uh, uh, he and Mon Mothma were key founders of the Rebel Alliance later on. However, after that, for various political reasons that it would take too long to go into, the two of them had a falling out. And uh, 
Garm went off on his own, uh, fighting the Empire through like guerrilla tactics, kind of doing a Saw Guerrera type thing. And uh, but then uh, the our uh, our crew, uh, Luke Han and Leia, were able to convince him to rejoin the New Republic to fight Thrawn, and he commanded the force that uh, defended Coruscant from Thrawn's attacks. Very cool stuff. What's his name again? Garm, Garm Bell Iblis. Garm Bell Iblis. So. <clears throat> Uh, that's right. We're getting into all kinds of different eras here. I don't think we're getting any old Republic people. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, no. well, we'll see. We'll see. And then I get one more. Yep. Yeah, you get one more. Your last pick. All right. Uh, I think the name is uh, Iusu Estorni. She was a mourner at Padme's funeral. She can be seen in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, her name comes from uh, Sue Rastani's handle on StarWars.com. Oh, very uh, cool. She, yeah. was the, she was the Star Wars editor back in the day. Yes. And uh, um, I picked her primarily because, well, I thought that if I got Padme on my committee that they would work together well. Uh, but also she's got, she's an alien and has an extremely goofy looking face. <laughs> <laughs> indeed so i mean that's the real purpose of this let's be real so my final pick this is mm. oh well i gotta you know what i gotta tip the scales a little bit i'm going with nay alivar from lord okay she's very anti palpatine signed the declaration of 2000 was part of the meeting that uh um in the deleted scene in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, so uh, she can work well with Padme and Bail. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm going with Ney Alivar. N E E Alivar. N E E. All right. <clears throat> Might be Ne, but, you know, Ney as in, you know, denoting a maiden name. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, your final my, pick. Is this this your is final my pick? final pick. So this is the last pick of the draft. All right, I was gonna go. I'm gonna go with a senator from Nemoidia. Now, some would immediately think that I would be going with, of course, there is no proof, Lot Dodd. B- <laughs> but no, I am going with Old Republic Senator Gunnaray Dodd. Not to be confused with Newt Gunray. His his name is Gunnaray. G U N A. R A Y Dodd. He may be related to Lot Dodd, a distant relative, but uh, Gunnaray Lod, the senator from Nemoidia, the final pick of the 2020 Padawan Library Galactic Senate draft. There we go. So. Uh, I like that you've got two not to be confused with characters <laughs> in your draft. <laughs> All right. So uh, now we have to divide our. Our, our committees up. Uh, we got to appoint chairs. Let's just go through chairs first. Dan, who is the chair of your committee? Mon Mothma. She knows how to lead. Mon Mothma is the chair. That's that's fair. That's fair. Um, my chair will be Axmo. Axmo, because he knows how to handle the bureaucratic nonsense. Mm. And you know what? It's even been said that he delights in bureaucratic minutia. So uh, I think he's perfect for this job. All right. And for me, since we are for the legalization of spice, I'm going to go with the character from the green planet, if you know what I mean. Greb Lips. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so very funny. All right. So then uh, we're going to have two subcommittees. Um, how basically, I don't know if you need to define the role of each subcommittee necessarily, but which two senators are going to be paired up uh, on your first subcommittee, Dan? Um, let's have uh, Gideon Danu and Garm Bell Iblis. Okay. Um, why is that? Any, yeah. Do you uh, think they'd work well together? Well, I think that they would counterbalance each other. Uh, Gideon Danu, like I said, is the uh, um, you know inheritor of uh, this big you know, corporate wealth. He's a he's a billionaire politician, if you will. Uh, but Garm Bell Iblis seems like he would not 
go for that. And so they might butt heads a lot, but I think they would kind of balance each other out. There you go. And then, yeah. yeah. Good idea. So, my first committee is going to be composed of Bail Organa and Halle Bertoni. Because I think Bail is very even keeled. He's going to be able to deal with the nonsense that Halle's printing. Um, so I think, I think he'd be best to pair off, uh, with her. What about All right. So, uh, I'm going to put the shady dudes with the shady dudes. Uh, I'm going to pick Sheev Palpatine and, uh, San Sauro together. They seem like they can oh, get a wow. lot done together. Uh, they seem like they would both be on the same side. They're on the same coin, same side of the coin. So that's my committee one. So. All right. So, and then final committee, second committee. Done. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, going to be Leo Organa and Yusu Estorni. Uh, the latter knew Leia's mother. Uh, so they would get along, <clears throat> I think. Uh, there would be some connection there, and they could work together well, I think. I like that. So my last committee, I guess, would have to be Padme Amidala mm-hmm. and... Uh, <laughs> and Ne and Ni Alivar, uh, who have worked together before, they have a proven track record, and they have they're very connected on this issue, on the issue of, of the, the the limits on the Chancellor's power. Uh, and I think that their uh, their unity would be able and and, and Bale's uh, um, nagging at Hallie would be able to overwhelm ultimately. And Axe is just going to go with. He's clearly just an opportunist, you know. Ax, uh, Axmo, it, it just wants to go along to get along, you know. Axmo so, just wants to go with the flow. Um, no. All right, and it's oh, sorry. No, go you ahead. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that it's. Uh, I think it's a little risky that you have an obvious war profiteer on your committee. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to be realistic here. <laughs> You know, no, no committee is going to be perfectly staffed, you know. You're going to have some scumbags on the committee. That's true. All right. And for my final committee, of course, uh, Bail Antilles and Gunneray Dodd. And the reasoning, of course, is the fact that they are often confused for other people. Um, and I think in their frustration of being confused as others, they'll get a lot done. They're like, we got to make names for ourselves. I- I'm not sure Gunneray Dodd would ever be confused since he lives thousands of that's true. Before. That's true. That may, I think New Gunray and Lot Dodd might be. It, it's so him. funny though. It's so funny that like both of those characters, not only not just one part of the name, both first and last names are are shared with other Star Wars characters. <laughs> yeah. All right. If only Wedge Antilles were an option here, you know I would. I know you one, would. Two, I know three, four. Oh, you five. know how Wedge feels about politicians. You oh, never get in. Now let's talk about Senators' <laughs> honorable mentions who didn't get picked up for the draft because I have a oh, list yeah. here. And uh, I, uh, the obvious ones that stand out to me are, of course, Lot Dodd. Um, uh, we have uh, Uncle Ono. Did anybody have Uncle Ono on their list from Rodia? No. I, 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 I looked at him. He's not on my on my board, but uh, go ahead. Okay. If you have anything you want to uh, say. Well, I mean, he would have been good because he, uh, he was a flip-flopper, if you remember that. He almost joined the Separatist uh, movement. He oh, was almost yeah, okay. swayed by... Uh, by Count Dooku, so there's that whole story. And uh, let's see, who else do I got on this list? Oh, I've got okay. one. I got Ed Ed Selbar Gain, who from Runa. Uh, remember, very anti Chancellor Valor, mm. and uh, you remember he seconded the vote of no confidence. <laughs> uh, so uh, just the notable character, I feel like Ooh. that has to be mentioned. Oh, what about uh, Ryo uh, Chuchi of Pantora? Uh, there was that whole plot. Oh. Uh, I can't remember what happened in that plot of Clone Wars, really, but there was like an ice planet, and one dude was telling her what to do and making bad decisions, and then you know she stepped up as senator, and she was a a good ally of Padme Amidala. So it's true. Yep. It's true. Uh, anybody else here? I have. Ooh. Well, I have, of course. I of course, as opposed to Axe Mo, I have Ask Ax, who was. <laughs> Was uh, was Axmo's successor after his assassination during the Clone Wars? Very pro Palpatine. This guy, uh, 
He was on the Loyalist Committee, which, of course, was composed of many anti pro and anti Palpatine people. I don't want to make the Loyalist Committee's name sounds like it's you know loyal to mm -hmm. Palpatine, but really it's loyal to the Republic versus the separate like versus to the, the Republic to democracy. Yeah, to the Republic. Mm -hmm. to democracy. Speaking of senators who were loyal to uh, Palpatine, no, I'm surprised he didn't get picked. Masamita. Uh, you have a call. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's difficult. I was going to say. Uh, you know, his power, but, his yeah. power went into the Imperial Senate too. I mean, he was, he shows up in Catalyst, uh, you know, that's true. He's around, mm -hmm. he's around much deep in. So yeah, I, I just, I didn't want to have people that were so pro Palpatine, you know, that they, uh, I mean, I guess I did have a war, war puppeteer <laughs> on my, uh, yeah. But uh, I just thought, you know what, the whole point of this is just to name a bunch of senators. Yeah, of course. <laughs> did, um, did you guys go through any, uh, did you guys uh, have any discarded ideas for committee names? Uh, well, my, I was going to, before we read the book that we're going to review today, I was going to be the committee to appoint uh, Trioculus as Emperor of the New Republic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, I I almost made uh, I almost made the uh, committee on desert planet revitalization. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, I didn't have any real committee ideas, hence why I went with something so basic. <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, I I liked um, I just one more uh, shout out, uh, very pro Palpatine from the Bajic sector. Fema Bob, just you know, I didn't want her to be felt, feel left out, so wanted to shout her out. But uh, are we happy with our committee? I think so. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. My, I think my committee is going to be caught in uh, in committee mm -hmm. for quite a long time, <laughs> which I think is is the sign of a successful committee. <laughs> I, I'm still a little bit disappointed that I didn't get Greb lips, but you know, <laughs> that's life. Greb lips, lips. So legend Greb lips. <laughs> All right, so uh, th that was very that fun. was that was fun. Uh, so anyway, uh, when when we come back, we're thirty. Oh, minutes ooh, oh, hang on, hang on. Well, uh, well, now you, the listener, should tell us who who is the clear winner. Of the Galactic oh, yes, Senate of draft, of course you can use. It's hard to determine a real winner. <laughs> I feel like it's different than the Jedi draft, which I felt like there was. Well, like, it's not. Well, you just you needed could to talk about combat. Mm -hmm. or well, you something. talk about who we all, we all said what our committees were. Which of these committees do you think would actually get the job done? Mine, Fair mine, enough. obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah, your your committee's actually pretty. Uh, well, yeah, it's got a bunch of autocrat fascists on it, so yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, I think Anakin would like that. He name. would so, use the hashtag Senate Draft. <laughs> it's an election year. Let's not do that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, we've got. Uh, yeah, when we come back, though, we're going to be delving back into the weird and wild world of Paul and Hollis David's Jedi Prince series with the third book, Zorba, The Hut's Revenge. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Padawan Library. I'm Tim May, here as always with my co-host, Levi Peretic, and our, Hello. And, and, and our very special guest this week, Dan May. Back for a third time to talk. Well, this is your fourth appearance, right? But you, third time, yeah. Jedi Prince Junior, glutton for so brunch. One more, and you get the jacket. You know, SML ja five times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I hope. Uh, yeah, like you know, you, you'll you'll get to go into the club, and you'll get to meet Paul Simon, who they count as a five timer, even though he only hosted twice, but he's been a <laughs> musical guest a bunch of times. <laughs> Uh, very dubious <laughs> distinction. I love Paul Simon, but hmm, suspect. That's all I'm saying. Uh, this, anyway. So this book, Zorba the Hut's Revenge. One thing I do like about these books, I'll say, at, at least for the purposes of this show, is that the opening crawl that's like three pages long, oh. which is awful, but it reminds me what happened in the previous books. So yep. I don't have to mm -hmm. reread them. I don't have to skim them. I don't even have to listen to our old episodes. That, so that's nice. I like. I'm like. Oh, I'm caught up. I remember now. I remember all the nonsense. 
But it's so well, such tortured writing. This prologue just keeps getting worse all the time. Well, <laughs> the whole book is tortured writing. I mean, they are, <laughs> before we get in, they are not before we get into the book, stylists, no, no. Let's talk about the cover first. Oh, yes. Of course, Drew Drew Struzan did this cover as usual. It's a good painted cover, but there is some wonky things going on this cover. First thing I want to point out, I don't know if you noticed, there's a floating building on the back. There's three buildings on this cover. Yep. On the front cover, there is what I think is Cloud City. Yes. And then if you turn around the back, well, we there's this what... building with a smokestack. Yeah, that's the that's, that's uh, the uh, factory the barge. barge. And then the other one yeah. is Han's Dream Sky House. Yes, yeah. yes, that's it's it's a nice house. I kind of like it. Yeah, house. very yeah. Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it that's is true. Very modern. I wonder if they gave Drew any any like uh, direction on that, or <laughs> if he was just like, oh, he's like has a house in the sky, and he just decided to do what he wanted. Well, that makes me wonder. Going back to the front <laughs> cover here. Here is, of course, uh, not Jabba the Hutt, but Zorba the mm. Hutt, who looks a hell of a lot like Jabba exactly. the Hutt with a mean... beard painted on him. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, he is Jabba's father. The resemblance could be uncanny. But he has, on his right side, he has three braids that are hanging, like, up off of his head. Yes. Like, they're, like, standing still. Now, when you open, like, Pig the pills, front cover basically. to the second page... yeah. Now, when you open, so I wonder if oh, like yeah, I see if if Drew got like was able to see these illustrations if before he, got he did the, Carl the cover Kessel illustrations, maybe. right? Because on like the page, the title page of the book, there is Zorba with his braids sticking up like in the air like that. But in the rest of the book, they are definitely down, like they don't hang in the air. Like <laughs> that. So that's that's my theory there that Drew Drew actually got to see these illustrations illustrations uh before he did his cover and for whatever reason he saw those braids sticking up off of zorba's head and was like yes that is on the cover <laughs> <laughs> dan you we've talked often listen yeah let's put a disclaimer out here drew struzan's an obvious legend of the field right great poster mm-hmm. painter <laughs> uh Although I would not put him at the top of my Star Wars list as far as that goes. He didn't do any of the original trilogy posters. That, to me, disqualifies him from being the GOAT when it comes to Star Wars. But, of course, all the Back to the Future posters and all the stuff in the 80s, the Muppet movie, uh, you know, all kinds of great stuff. And then, of course, the prequel posters and the special edition posters are iconic Star Wars images. No shots when it comes to that. And even some of his book covers I like quite a bit, but we've talked about the book covers from the 90s that he did. So lazy. So unbelievably <laughs> lazy. So, so, Drew, I don't know, you know, if your audience is, like, very familiar with all of his book covers, if they read, like, the Bantam Spectra books from the 1990s. I imagine there's a decent amount of overlap, some, I would yeah. guess. Oh, I, I, I'd imagine, but uh, if you haven't, Look at them sometime. You can look up the images online. There are so many times where Drew Struzan just takes the same stock images of the characters from the movies and paints them. This is an example. Han on this left-hand side, that's like, I've seen that Han Solo. I mean, that's from Return of the Jedi. I've seen that Han Solo on like 10 different Star Wars book covers. Uh, um, same with Leia. And and then the Jabba thing is so egregious here. Although it, who made that decision first, him or Carl Kessel? That's mm-hmm. worth <laughs> to to have it just be Jabba with a beard. I I still think he could have not even if it had been Carl Kessel that drew him like that. Carl Kessel did not lift an image from Return of the Jedi of Jabba the Hutt and paint over it with a beard. <laughs> that's what that's what Drew Struzan did. I uh, my my favorite. Struz an example though is on. Uh, um, sometimes he'll take the actors from different movies. Very uh, rarely, but yes, sometimes. Sometimes uh, I, I'm a big fan of on the back cover of Shadows of the Empire. Leia's there, but it's really a picture of Carrie Fisher from the Time Guardian, which is a I believe maybe not direct video, but a very cheap science fiction movie from the late '80s that she was in there. Um, what I always thought was interesting is because he did the Blade Runner poster, the classic iconic poster. I, and he reused an image from it on the cover of Courtship of Princess Leia. Of course. But the thing that I thought was weird is Harrison Ford kept being in movies all through the 90s, in big, big movies. 
And I always thought it was strange that as the characters aged in those post-Jedi novels, it's like, why not take a picture of Harrison from The Fugitive and make him into Han Solo? You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I I thought it was like a missed opportunity on the part of uh, uh, Drew, who does obviously use photo reference. I mean, you know, his stuff doesn't look lifeless the way that a lot of photo reference material can. But, uh, yeah. You know, listen, Drew Struz is a legend. I don't want to disrespect Drew Struz in too much. No shots of Drew. But, you know, this is obviously, like, the easiest work of his life. And why should he care about the cover of uh, Jedi Prince 3, Zorba the Hutt's Revenge? Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, when, when I was reading the book, for some reason, uh, maybe it's because of Zero the Hutt from Clone Wars, but uh, Zorba the Hutt the entire time to me just sounded like Foghorn Leghorn. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and that was in my head when I read it today. Listen, I read this book. This is something I want to say in a general sense. I read this book a couple of hours ago. <laughs> and it is largely, like, left my brain. I, you know what I mean? Like, it is... <laughs> mm-hmm. it, 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 mm-hmm. There's so little of consequence occurs in this book. And my big pro- one of my big problems with the previous two books is that way too much happens, Right. For like 70 right. pages, there's so much incident crammed into 70 pages. And too little happens yeah, in this book. They go, they swing way in the other direction. It's, it's wild. It is the... I felt, like, I, I felt like the first 20 pages, like we went to Tatooine, we had the droid fest, <laughs> and then like we, and then we got to Bespin, and then it just stayed in Bespin, and it didn't go anywhere after that, so... Uh, well, let's... Let's get into it a little bit. Um, we still got three more books, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three more of these. Uh, we'll spread them out over the next year. Um, <laughs> you know, I think we're about a year out from our first. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Jedi from, Prince from the. Fr- yeah, I want to say because that was yeah, episode March. four. That was the fourth episode. Uh, yep, and yeah, so it, it's been fun, uh, but we've got a long way to go. So let's jump into the the, the plot. Uh, as it as it is, uh, Luke is uh, is headed to Tatooine with three PO and R two and um, uh, Ken. Uh, remember the the Ken is uh, nothing. What, Ken is nothing. What is the well? Ken is Wesley <laughs> Crusher, really. But yeah, um, not even he doesn't do anything in this book. Well, he knows everything. At least. That's true. But the uh, but yeah, Ken, uh, who was what? What is his title again? He's a Jedi He's prince. The Jedi prince. The Jedi prince. Yeah, what are you talking about? He's from the Lost City, the Jedi on Yavin Four, which of course who who may or may not be related to Obi Wan. Oh, good. Yeah, I think sense. Ken is related to Kenobi. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, what, so if so if his first name Ken comes from Kenobi, and he is a Kenobi, is he Ken Kenobi? We'll see. Ken. I'm sure we'll find out. That's obviously like he's going to be related to Obi Wan. They would not drop that hint. That happens later in the book, but basically, at the if be- Ken is related to Obi Wan, that'll be the second dumbest family connection in Star Wars history. You know what? It would be worse. <laughs> let's not. Let's be fair. Hmm. <laughs> I think it, I think it's worse. I I well okay. I think the Palpatine thing is worse because the stakes are so much higher. This is a nonsense nothing book. But just if this is somehow even worse as a setup as like I think Ken might be related to Kenobi. It's, it's more it's, poorly written. It's yeah. not dumber conceptually though. Maybe not, but I'm saying the setup also matters. The actual execution also matters. And I'm not, you know, I don't defend Rise of Skywalker, and I don't even want to talk about it. it it's bumming me out. As we speak, my mood is dropping. My granddaughter has come home, Tim. <laughs> Listen, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Zorba the Hutt's revenge of at, at least as bad, probably worse. It's worse. Star Wars it's story. worse. A worse Star Wars thing than Rise of Skywalker. Much worse. Um. I'm Overall, sure, it's worse. We're not freakish fans of legends that are like, oh, well, literally anything they did then is better than what they're doing now. Some freaks. No one's going to think that. I'm not saying we <laughs> think that they think that of us. I'm just saying, like, I guarantee you that there are pr- maybe even people listening to this podcast that are like, what? How can you say the Jedi Prince There's is nobody worse that. than Rise There's of no Skywalker? Way. 
I, if you're out there, people that think that the Jedi Prince books are better than any Star Wars movie, even the worst one, uh, let them know, please. I want to hear those comments. Yes, I want to know I, all I, about I actually that. do. I would love to interview you. Obviously. Hashtag Jedi Prince rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Galactic Senate Draft. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out. So if you want to use yeah. that, we all know you guys, we got so much social engagement on this show, guys. We, <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, so basically, yeah, Luke and the droids and Ken and his stupid droid are, uh, they're looking for a present for Han's housewarming party at his dream sky house on Bespin. I love how this... The house is done. The house is finished. The house is complete. I, I love that this is, like, continued, this thread of the dream sky house. This it's the best part. It is the best part of these books. <laughs> it really is. It makes me so happy. It's completely out of character. It's complete nonsense for Han Solo. But uh, it's delightful. Um, it Something is. I'd like to and, mention. Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, what I was going to say here. So Luke is having a hard time. He has no idea what to get. Han. And, and he's got some ideas here. And uh, Luke exclaimed as he adjusted their flight path, I know what we can get Han as a housewarming gift. We'll get him a ultra high density household communication screen. The 12 year old Jedi Prince sta- uh, snapped in the uh, seat alongside Luke and shook his head and said, No, sorry, Commander Skywalker. Han already has two of those. Oh, well, scratch that idea, Luke said. In fact, scratch all ten ideas that I've come up with so far. Ken closed his eyes, forcing himself to concentrate. But what about getting Han a hollow projector or a deluxe power booster for one of his two cloud racing cars? What about a supercharged multi-directional blaster? Uh, Han here living like a king. Um, and then it's ultimately decided that Luke is going to get Han a housekeeping droid. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the reason the reason why they're going to get this housekeeping droid is because we know Han Solo knows nothing about keeping a huge house clean. He'll need desperately help. Uh, <laughs> he can't expect Chewbacca to be cleaning and, up after him all the time. And so this is what they do. They go to Tatooine. Oh, wait. Hold, hold on. One thing. Okay. I'm sorry. But, like, so they're flying to Tatooine yeah. in what? Oh, a a Y wing, a Y wing. There's an illustration. (laughs) I know this is dork shit, but listen. There's an illustration of uh, on on page two of Luke Skywalker, little Ken, the droids, all three of them, all in the cockpit of a Y wing. Why is R two even in the cockpit? By the way, wouldn't he be in the right? He should be be in in the the, astromech socket. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, you can't fit that many people. In the cockpit of a Y wing, and the seats aren't side by side; they're back to back. You know, right. so this is all. This God might seem nitpicky. Oh no, it's totally fair. It, it's nonsense. Damn it, Carl! Yeah, well, I don't blame Carl. The, the yeah, it's written that way. It's written that they're That's in a Y wing. That's true. What is Carl That's supposed true. to do? Don't diss Carl. <laughs> You know what? Oh, let's go back a minute here because have did you guys read the acknowledgments? Uh, I read here? everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, they thank Lucas, and the, yeah, what? Yeah, they're very lengthy. With, with they, thanks to George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, to Lucy Wilson for her devoted guidance, to Charles Kochman for his unfailing insight, and to West End Games for their wonderful Star Wars source books. Also to Betsy Gould, Judy uh, Gittenstein. Uh, Peter Miller and Richard A. Rosen for their advice and help. What's so weird about this? Oh well, I mean, it's just a lot of people. It's a lot of people, and the fa- and the West End Games. I guess well, they it's not th- super they thanked weird, the but... West End Games thing before, and we talked about that. If over. they had looked at the source books, yeah. they would have known that there you can't fit five people into a cockpit of a Y wing. Oh, of course, <laughs> listen, the, we talked about the West End Games thing on one of the previous episodes, but. About how it's funny that they don't follow like any of the universe that's built in those at all, but um, all right. So, sorry, uh, no, it's fine. Uh, they go to Tatooine to something called the uh, uh, the Droid Fest. Yeah, the the annual sale that is put on by the JDTs. Remember the JDTs, the that's, Jawa Droid Traders. That's right. 
Not just Jawas, the Jawa droid tra- traders, which is fine, but the fact that they have a name, JDT. Listen, like, if you want to, like, be like, oh, well, Jawas can be something besides tra- traders, fine, but then, like, they would not be referred to as Jawa dro- droid traders. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, nobody's like, you know, hey, uh, whatever, the Italian, dro- uh, the Italian uh, droid traders, I don't know. Whatever, I can't it's 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 not uh, <laughs> it, I, it's not even that so much to it's me. Just, it's the fact that there's an abbreviation for it. There's abbreviations for everything in these books. It's everything, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But yeah, hey. Um, oh, we learned that uh, Jabba had no will. Do you remember this whole? Thing? Oh, and remember so Jabba after... had, and his will. Uh, we'll get to that soon. Uh, le- okay. They, they buy a droid, and the droid is 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 coded as female. And C three PO is apparently a droid misogynist. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot about that. Which is very funny. Uh, he says, "Excellent micro circuits." Three PO declared, "Superb mobility too." It's rare to find a female droid who's been mal- uh, who's been manufactured with such quality. And now three PO, Luke interrupted. I've read the manufacturing statistics. There's absolutely no difference between the quality of materials used to make male and female droids. I'm sorry if that's a blow to your pride. That's quite all right, Master Luke, said C-3PO. We droids have no pride, only a sense of honor and duty. So progressive. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> what a weird scene. <laughs> I, like, this, these books are crazy. They, like, we un- maybe undersell how crazy they are. They read like it's like a first draft off the top of his head, he's well. Their head, they're they're yeah. making it up as they go along. Yeah, like either, there's no second pass, and perhaps a lot of coke is involved. Oh, perhaps. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> it always amazes me. Like, hey, hey man, they went they happen. went to film school with Paul Schrader. I'm sure there's some coke involved. <laughs> 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 no shots to Schrader, my king. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, okay, watch cat so... people sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Jabba apparently had no will. And uh, after after he, he died, um, what happened was uh, his palace was taken over by the government of Tatooine and turned into a retirement The government of Tatooine? For... Tatooine does not strike me as something that has a very strong planetary government. Agreed. No, the huts ruled. The, the huts ruled. There was no government. Yeah. It was hut controlled. Yeah. Yeah, it's you can't take her royal highness yeah. there. The, the huts, huts are gangsters. Are gangsters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The huts are gangsters. So when it and so it makes no sense that like there would be a government all of a sudden like another hut would step in and take over. Um, so anyway, they turned his palace into the Tatooine retirement home for aged aliens, uh, but there wasn't enough money to keep it open. Um, so now it's just. <sighs> The only people there are ranats, and they scurry around, and they chew on the furniture and drapes. <laughs> Listen, this is the expert comic voice of Professor Hackard Drive at Work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and go back to our first episode if you don't know what that means. Go, go back to episode oh, yeah. four, Glow and Dark Vader. You'll learn all about Professor Hackard Drive. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and we also learned here that Jabba owned a casino on Cloud City, Holiday Towers, uh, which is now run by Lando Calrissian. And listen, so, you, making so, Jabba, like, it makes sense. This is from 1991. It's, of course they're going to make Jabba into some sort of Trump figure. Sure. That, that's fair. <laughs> um, you know, uh, like every villain in every movie at that time was basically a Trump figure. Um, but, like... It's just funny that he. It's what's it called again? What's the Bespin uh, Casino called? A uh, holiday Holiday Tower. <laughs> yeah, Holiday Towers Casino. It's like just yeah, very like chintzy eighties businessman stuff. Mm. Yep, and uh, Zorba he just got out of prison. Uh, he's been in prison five years. Uh, for illegally mining precious gemstones, and apparently nobody in that time bothered to tell him that Jabba had died. Uh, so he shows up to um, to Tatooine and tries to get into Jabba's palace. Uh, the little ball droid, like the eye that pops out of the door, won't let him in. So Zorba goes to a local cantina where he runs into Grand Moff Hissa, Hissa. and Hissa's... 
his uh, he's hanging wanted posters for the Jedi Prince. You know the the Empire is offering a big reward, and uh, Hissa tells him that his son died. So Zorba then gets some bounty hunters, and his main crony becomes Tybor. Uh, a reptilian kind of character and uh, they go in and they blast the palace door open and uh, Zorba goes into this secret room and finds CB99 and he has CB99 does your memory bank still include the file J T H W, which we're never told what that stands for but we can assume that it is Jabba the Hutt Will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it is legitimately written like something that I would have written when I was like eight years old. Yeah. Oh, like, oh totally. yeah. It is mm-hmm. straight up because I remember writing stories and like being like, oh, well, this organization will be like the, an acronym or something. And like, it's always like too long. Like, and it's like, it's something <laughs> that doesn't need to be shortened. Like, things like, like it's, it's like just. Just because, like, oh, I know there's, like, acronyms and stuff that I read, you know what I mean? Like, it, it is, mm-hmm. it's very childlike. Yeah, um, I, a couple, another thing I want to point out, you mentioned that wanted poster. Uh, do you have the page, Tim, the text of the wanted poster? Because I really like that red. Okay. Um, it, it's in the text of the book. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, because the illustration cuts it off. All right, let's see. Well. Oh, I got it, I got okay. it. Okay. Wanted by Emperor Trioculus, a Jedi prince named Ken from the Lost City of the Jedi. Generous reward. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, a Jedi prince named Ken. Yeah, who exactly in the galaxy knows about the Lost City of the Jedi and what a Jedi prince is? Uh, f- and for example, I don't think I know what a Jedi prince is, and uh, so I don't know how all these other denizens of the galaxy do complete nonsense but oh also um did i we get to the part where i i people are getting paid in gemstones uh, not yet. He does not start yet. paying people on gemstones, which is interesting that he still has so many gemstones since he did time in prison for illegally mining them. So you'd think that they would have been confiscated from him when he was thrown right. into prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's tossing them out like candy. So now we're in. We're about chapter three, entitled Han Solo's Housewarming. Oh party. yes. Oh. And it, and in the beginning of this chapter. Well, we failed to mention that Luke, once he gets to Tatooine, rents a land speeder, and he gets attacked by Tusken Raiders, and he has to abandon the land speeder and hitch a ride within a sand crawler with the Jawas. And when he gets back to, uh, I think it's Mos Eisley, um, he uh, the land speeder uh, office is closed. Um, so Luke here, this is on page 20, Luke left a note explaining that due to the sudden attack by Tusken Raiders, he was forced to leave the land speeder at Droid Fest. He hoped that the Tatooine Planetary Insurance Company, <laughs> you would think that would be an acronym, uh, <laughs> would cover the expenses for getting it back to Mos Eisley. If not, they could bill him on Yavin 4, Care of Spin, the Senate Planetary <laughs> Intelligence Network. And, like, so, they, listen, they, uh... Spin is too busy to pay that off because they're they're really busy debating which of the 2000s Archers of Loaf albums is better and better carries on the legacy of 90s like uh, underground rock but yeah so <laughs> <laughs> um. alright um, so, so I love that... Spin Magazine shouts to Spin Magazine <laughs> R.I.P. So afterwards, they they get back in uh, Luke's jumbo Y wing, and uh, they go to they go to Cloud City where they're met by Governor Lando Calrissian. And uh, oh, there's some so, great Lando moments. There's some great Lando moments in here, and but there's an issue. So they're on the landing platform, and Ken he can't see Han's dream sky house. What? There's a brown haze a, in the a air. A brown haze. What you know? You might even call it. A braze. 
so we call it braised Lando explained <laughs> as if reading Ken's thoughts short short for brown haze it's air pollution and it's become a serious problem here in Cloud City so I love that every one of these books deals with some sort of like ecological disaster and listen, it's, I, it's very 90s it's very and it, I wish it were more now um, but the, uh, <laughs> like, I, you know, we all made fun of Captain Planet and stuff for, a lot, just because, you know, it, it's bad. It's, like, poorly made, but I wish there was more of an impulse amongst children's entertainment to, uh, to talk about this kind of stuff. Just, you know, ideally in a more, you know, nuanced and interesting way, but, you know. Right. So, but well, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, uh, the environmental messaging here, and obviously, the, the Davids, I'm sure, live in Los Angeles and in the early 90s. So they deal with lots of braids, all the I'm time. Sure. That could be just their word. Could be, yeah. So, uh, so this book deals with air pollution. The last planet, uh, the last book dealt with the uh, destruction of the forest, the rainforest, yeah. and uh, and the first book was, of course, save the whales. All, all uh, still so this, huge problems, by the way. They really are. You yeah, know, they so let, gone let's anywhere. not. Let, I, I love talking shit on the Davids here, but. Uh, you know, they were right. Very prescient of them. You know, those right. were issues that nobody talked about. <laughs> but the Davids. Anyway. So the reason, the reason we have this braze going on is because um, Trioculus has a refinery, a refinery barge, they keep calling it. And it's, it, uh, they, it's, uh, it's uh, gathering, uh, what is this? Precious rare metals and Tibanian gas from the planet core. So Bespin, of course, is a gas planet, but apparently it has a liquid core. So he's gathering this up, and Lando sighed. I sent him two messages asking him politely to <laughs> shut down and go away, but Trioculus doesn't understand the word polite. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> listen, this is Lando, nuts. Lando is apparently a horrible governor. <laughs> uh, Lando's apparently a terrible governor because, listen, Trioculus is the potentially illegitimate leader of a rogue state. Right. And and he was able to set up a factory at the core <laughs> of, his, of Lando's planet. And Lando is like, I just, well, there's nothing I can do about it. And I sent him some notes. <laughs> Trioculus is also a terrible puppet emperor because... Lando Calrissian, it, General Lando Calrissian, who flew the Millennium Falcon, blew up the second Death Star. <laughs> Trioculus is going to just, you know, coexist with him on Bespin and, like, you know, make sure he, like, you know, rebuffs his regulation attempts. No. <laughs> it's just complete nonsense. And Lando does not, like, uh,. Drape himself in glory in this book. I would say. There's no, no. Some very dubious Lando song. screws up. There's a great Lando illustration. Lando screws up I'm, big time. I can't wait to talk about one illustration of Lando later on. But. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. so after. So after this, Lando tells uh, tells Luke, I'll be by the party later. I got to go to the casino and take care of some business. So we get to the housewarming party, and there's something I want to point out here. In the center, this is like the center of the house. In the most comfortable chair ever designed, a sort of gigantic floating pillow was reserved for the guest of honor, Princess Leia. Her eyes were closed for a moment, letting the gentle rocking motion relax her and help her for a few moments to forget her worries about Spin's plans and secret projects. Beneath Leia's floating chair, Han was playing the role of busy host, making sure everyone's <laughs> Zoochberry's glass were full and catching up with his buddies on his home planet. Most of were were bachelor Corillian cargo pilots. One by one, he introduced them to Princess Leia. So this is going to sound kind of uh, uh, crude and crass, but so Leia is on a floating chair in the center of the party. She is hovering above everybody, and Han is pointing her out to everybody. Has Han ever heard the uh, the phrase... Oh boy! Put the pussy oh, on a pedestal. No. Listen, <laughs> like that's what everyone he's doing who here. has ever, every white boy who has ever quoted Chris Rock routines, I'm telling you to stop right now. 
<laughs> Don't be Michael Scott right now. Michael Scott. <laughs> I, what, I, I, <laughs> I didn't know that. So. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, it is a weird scene, though. Hospitality Han. Yes, Han? Well, uh, Chewie, Chewie's <laughs> in an apron, by the way. I just want to point yeah. that out. Yeah, Chewie's cooking. <laughs> Listen, to be honest with you, there's this uh, Batman miniseries. There's this Batman series from the mid 2000s comic book series called All Star Batman and Robin: The Boy Wonder by <laughs> Frank Miller and Jim Lee. And that book started off, and it was clearly very serious, like Lee intended. And everybody clearly thought it was a joke. Uh, but so because it's just ridiculous. It's the thing where he says, "I'm the goddamn Batman" and all that stuff. And by the end of the run. Like, it's just out and out, like, intentional comedy. And, like, it actually becomes a pretty funny book. I wonder if that's going to be the arc of these books. Because there's stuff in here that is very, very silly. And, uh, yeah, I, I just... Yeah, I, this definitely has that kind of vibe. Uh, do, do you think that they were, like... I mean, obviously they were trying to be funny with that stuff. But do you think that they, like, are no longer taking the series seriously at all? I don't know, because, uh, like, the, just the events of this book are so ridiculous that it just seems like maybe uh, they're supposed to be, uh, like, like it's like it's supposed to be, like, just a total farce, and they're just like, we're making fun of this thing that this that George created. Like, I, I think they might know George personally, uh, just because, mm-hmm. like, if they know Paul Schrader, like, they, like they, they're, they probably ran in those circles. And she was like a she she well, she like uh, did like Oscar campaigns and stuff for Columbia Pictures, or right? Something. So yeah, yeah. Um, so like, I wonder if they're just like this is this silly thing that became the biggest thing in the world that like this guy we know created. Like, we're just gonna make fun of it for six books. Like, is that what the intention well, is? Well, if we were, if we want to talk about comedy on on page twenty eight. The band knew all of Han's favorite Karelian folk dances. <laughs> he even taught Leia. He even taught Leia how to do the space pirate boogie. Oh my god! When they were both, when they were both out of breath and laughing from dancing so hard, Han asked the band to play "Sweet Lady from Alderaan." He thought it would make Leia happy because Alderaan was her home planet, but instead it brought tears to her eyes as she remembered how the Empire had used the Death Star to blow the entire planet Alderaan to pieces. You know, just not and the, not to bring... Uh, I, so, uh, what, there's more? <laughs> well, and then Leia started coughing. Are you all right, Princess? Han asked forward, worriedly. It's the braze, she said. The air pollution on Bespin seems to be getting worse. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, not to bring up Rise of Skywalker again, but where was the scene where Poe and Zori Bliss did the space pirate boogie together? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> why Why was Sweet Lady from Alderaan not played at Leia's funeral? <laughs> 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 oh, just boy. everybody just listening to the song and crying. Oh. oh, boy. So, basically, from this point on, a lot of just kind of stuff happens. Basically, well, actually, the next big thing is Lando. The Lando thing, right? That comes... Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Lando is at the casino, and he runs into Zorba. And Zorba insists that this is still... This is his casino... This is Jabba's casino, so, um, and he shows Lando the will, and uh, it says that he, all all of Jabba's possessions were left to Zorba because Jabba didn't have any children. Which, come on, Jabba definitely had kids uh, all around the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Although I guess maybe he never fucked any huts, so uh, we don't have to worry about it. Huts are uh, <laughs> huts are hermaphroditic. Oh right, you're right. No. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about well, that. Don't, well, don't. I, mean, I doubt how could we, how could we that, forget though. about the Hutlet? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah, maybe not in uh, the canon, but in legends they were. Yeah. Well, who knows? Uh, right. But regardless, they. Um, so basically, uh, <laughs> Zorba insists that the casino is already owned by him, but Lando's like, "This guy's a mark. I'm going to play Savak with him," and. Uh, 
and uh, Zorba says, like, basically, like, if I win, I get, I become governor of the planet, and you have to leave forever, or vice versa. And Lando's like, of course I'm going to take that deal, basically. But then uh, Zorba just cleans him out, like, just crushes him. And there's a great illustration on... Uh, 38. Yeah, page 38. Jesus, where Lando's just completely devastated. <laughs> We're going to post this on the Instagram. Hand on his we, face. we have to do oh, that. Can, yeah. can I uh, bring up another image from a couple pages before? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, page 34. Um, so, the bounty hunter, the Barabel bounty hunter that uh, Zorba hired, uh, look at this outfit he's wearing. It's like a he's like a sexy lizard man, right? He's got like a he's got like kind of like a nineteen eighties like leotard thing going on where you can fully see his hips, but his arms are completely mm-hmm. covered by sleeves, and he's got well, huge shoulder pads. He looks like a patron of the club Tech Noir and Terminator. Also, <laughs> uh, also too, like with it being like a leotard, like it com- there's like a groin area to it, but he has this massive tail coming out of the back of it, so like. Does it go like, or is it just like a cod piece? Actually, like it's hard to see like what oh, it yeah. even is. He actually straight up looks a lot like the the uh, Gorn from Star Trek from the Star Trek episode. That's fair. Yeah. Arena. Yeah, yeah, he d- yeah he does. And on uh, the Queen of the Empire cover, uh, he is his head on the Queen of the Empire cover is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, uh, that's straight up the noticed. creature from the Black Lagoon. That's shocking. Wow. <laughs> Universal. Struzen. Universal. Get Struzen. on it. <laughs> I know. Oh. Also, if we're talking about the illustrations, I noticed something else on page. Where is it here? Um, it's during Droid Fest, way back on page seven. I think Iron Man is in this. Uh, there, in the back corner, you'll see that there's like two like oh, droids, like I this kind him. of. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, Carl like, Kessel did draw did, did work for Marvel Comics, so he might have snuck in. To say that. nothing of the fact that the housekeeping droid kind of looks like the uh, like maid droid from Spaceballs. Oh yeah, like Joan Rivers. Ooh, yeah, 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 she yeah. does. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. So. Uh, but but now we're talking about visual stuff on this uh, audio podcast. We're describing it. We're describing it. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, people talk about movies on podcasts all the time. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, you know, I think that Ryan Johnson should go back for the special edition trilogy of the sequels. Uh, <laughs> and that add Zorba. Should happen, by the way. Yeah, add Zor- yeah I agree. Uh, add Zorba into the background at Canto Bite. Oh, that would be a lot of fun. Mm-mm, that would be a lot of That'd fun. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, speaking of Canto Bite, I found out uh, recently that uh, Joseph Gordon Lovett is the voice of that character who is like, he's got the real thick southern draw, which is like, I saw him go that way. That makes sense. Uh, you know, I mean, that, he's been in yeah. every. Apparently, he has a cameo in Knives Out, that, like a voice cameo. He's on like a. or something. Oh. So. Um, yeah, like, uh, so yeah, he's been in every Ryan Johnson movie. Did, did, uh, did Daniel Craig do the voice of Zorba in my head? Because that's yeah. what it sounded like, uh, speaking of <laughs> Knives Out. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. I bet he'll be in the Knives Out sequel as a real character. That's my guess. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, speaking, speaking of referencing movies, I love the way that Sopranos has commentary on movies, like, written <laughs> into the show. <shows>, yes. <laughs> because, because all of the stuff with Favreau and them just dissing swingers was hilarious. <laughs> there's the, there's the whole joke in, uh, the first episode of season two where, like, that psychiatrist that Tony goes to is Melfi, like, oh, this get is the all. Memes. You're on season two. No, no, no. No, it's before Melfi reaccepted oh, him as a oh, patient. Right. When he went yeah. to the other guy, yeah, okay. yeah, and he was like, "Well, this is all a little too analyze that." Yeah. And... yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And then there's the there's um and then there's a great bit I think in the third episode where uh, where Chris sees Martin Scorsese get out of a fucking limo and yes, he's like, yes. "Hey, Marty, condom, I liked it." <laughs> 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 then there's the whole bit where, which by the way, that's a Marty tongue. impersonator. Like I I noticed yeah, that because yeah, yeah. then it wasn't Marty in the credits. Yeah. It, I was convinced he when I saw so it. I'm like, like oh, I'm like, shocked! <laughs> I was shocked too. Well, and so then, that's um, been our Sopranos se- corner. <laughs> oh, oh, and then also in season two, there's a whole bit where he's in Tony's in Melfi's <laughs> office and he's talking about watching Seven and how about like he got halfway through it and was just like, why do I even care who the killer is? Like it's not important, so I just shut the movie off. Like. <laughs> 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 oh man! 
Oh yep. god, it's the best. It's the best. I'm glad you like it's it. It's great. Uh, yeah, no, it's so uh, yeah. Watch the. Sopranos and until people. the Russian comes back, Sopranos is closed. Oh. <laughs> well, he has no clue what that means yet. Oh, I have no idea. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. I'm sure it'll make me laugh eventually. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> ne- end the next season. Um, okay. All right. Anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, what were we on? Where were we? Oh, well, well, um, the Kate, the housekeeping droid, we haven't mentioned her by name yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kate, yeah. um, <laughs> she fell off a balcony. Oh, yes. Um, after, after she finished cleaning the house. Let her go. And, um, <laughs> well, ooh, ooh, before that, before that, Han is disappointed that Lando did not show up at the party. And uh, Lando uh, phones Han, and he tells he tells a great he tells yeah, yeah on page forty three, and uh, and Lando t- Lando tells him that oh I I screwed up big time, buddy. Uh, I'm no longer governor. I lost the casino. I, I'm, I'm I'm skipping town. So and what's funny here is uh, oh no, wait Lando, I want to read this Lando bit. Okay. You, see, you, you read, uh, but what will you do, Lando? <laughs> but what will you do, Lando? You're out of a job. Don't worry about me, Lando replied. I've still got a few tricks up my sleeve. I've been thinking about trying my hand at the theme park business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> hologram fun world. So, oh, I forgot so about hologram be... fun world. Oh, yeah, it's, ho- it's hologram fun world. Seeding later events. Oh, oh man. I completely forgot. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, just theme parks are funny. Like, I couldn't. I completely forgot about that. Oh, my God. There's so, oh, go so since... I know Jedi Prince goes to Hologram Fun World in one of the books. It might be Queen of the Empire. But this could mean that after the events of this book, uh, Lando, it, that's a Galaxy of Fear. So, like, yeah. the Galaxy of Fear, take that Galaxy of Fear book takes place after this book. <laughs> right, so right. No, I remember we talked about how it was in this series that mm-hmm. it originated. I just completely forgot. Like, wow, oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's gonna come back. I thought it was just like a joke on the part of the day. It's like, oh, they're like, because like, it's 91, like, Universal just opened, and they're like, just like, oh man, we everybody's got... Everybody's getting ev- into theme park business. Everyone's getting into theme parks, yes. <laughs> I, 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 Eisner's stealing the studio ideas, building MGM, oh, yeah, you laughing. know, all this Never did stuff. Eisner in my presence. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Never did Never, ever did Eisner. Never did. So... So, so going back to the book, Kate falls off a balcony, which prompts uh, Luke and Leia to hop into a cloud car and go save her. Um, they catch her. However, uh, after they catch her, they decide to take a look at Trioculus's factory barge, um, and they end up crashing on the surface of the barge, uh, which then causes uh, a bunch of stormtroopers to come out, and uh, they try to dive into the sewer tunnels. Um, let's see what happens here. Leia gets captured, and they close Luke off in the tunnels and fill it, fill it with poisonous gas, uh, which Luke then uses the Force to open the hatch and escape. Oh, yeah, the Force. Um, but the, but the <laughs> Empire, yeah, he, not his lightsaber. He couldn't just cut the hatch open. Um, well, no, anyway. we were talking, he was, I think you're saying that, like, this series barely uses barely the force. acknowledges the existence of the force at all. Yeah, it's so obnoxious. I also like that like Luke isn't portrayed as a Jedi master training like Ken in the ways of the Force. He's portrayed as his guardian. He's referred to as Ken's guardian. And like guardian, Ken knows so more about the Jedi than him, so it's like so yeah. obnoxious. Yeah, you you know like. It, it, so that stuff is completely kind of sidelined in this book, and yet we get so much of Han talking about like how excited he is to be a homeowner. Oh. This is a book for children. <laughs> it's banking a hell of a lot on the erroneous assumption that kids put the same premium on being a homeowner that bland bourgeois adults do. <laughs> so true. Go at him. Hard as fuck. Oh, damn. Dan's excited for uh. Super Tuesday. So we're in uh, chapter six now, a tale of two captives. Um, so 
Well, wait. Han? If we, is this the scene where Han and Ken talk about licenses? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Han is uh, showing uh, Ken his Cloud City uh, racing cars. He's got two of them, a blue one and a red one. I do like that, and... like, like, Han is supposed to be, like, was, like, a racing league commissioner at some point in the new canon between Jedi and Force Awakens. Like hmm. so, like which the, is re- these books are canon in the new canon. Yeah, exactly. I feel like they can't. They mm. Well, Snow Clarone is in uh, the uh, the right. sequel trilogy. Of course, so. of course, that's true. Snow Clarone was he? He was he was some sort of genetic creature. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was one of many failed attempts at cloning by uh, Galactic Emperor Sheev Palpatine. Yeah, the dark, dark stuff. My committee failed. So yeah. that that <laughs> dark science and cloning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Oh, man. Good God. Uh, This is not Penny's boat, so... Not Sheev's clone. Like, yeah, I guess, you know, you gotta be 18 to get a license on Bespin uh, to ride an air car or whatever. Uh, uh, but but older humans. if you're an alien. Some racist cloud car laws on Bespin. Well, aliens, they have to wait till they're 20. Yeah. Ex- except for Biths, who can drive at the age of 10 because of their advanced bipedal canopods. Ken which wishes reach mature. He, he was uh, a Bith. A Bith yeah, for that reason. So anyway, then, like... Han goes after Luke and Leia, right? That's what happens. Like he leaves. Yeah, because it's it's been an hour. It's been a couple hours. Han doesn't worry until it's been a couple hours since they've been gone. Yeah, like when they're really just going to catch someone who's falling. Right? Like, you think it would be easy peasy. Yeah. It's a gas planet. Yeah, so uh, the, the whole planet is gas. Um, so the... Uh, uh, sorry, that's a the whole the whole planet's a city. I'm whatever. Anyway, oh. so the, uh, bad, okay. bad reference. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, Yeesh. You know, listen, listen. It, you know, we work for free. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's free. We're not professional comedians. <laughs> Why try? We're not one of these fancy podcasts hosted by professional comedians that like. Get fucking fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars a month on Patreon. That's how you guys should expand your audience. Go on Mark Marin's show. I'm, I'm sure he'd let you. Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, like, go on Marin. Yeah, well, we should go on Marin. We get we, we should get to talk to him about like the time we you know went up at the store <laughs> and like uh, and Rodney Dangerfield was in the audience and yeah you know who 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 are your guys oh, Tim? Who, who are your guys? <laughs> 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 oh, that's so good. I, well, I love Baron. No shots of Baron. <laughs> um, please, please let us on your show. No, I, 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 I'm never going to be on a show, but I like the show. I, mean, I like it. I, I, I'm, I know I first know It's like it. the most basic bitch podcast of all time, but it's incredible. It's great. It's iconic. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, so yeah, uh, what were you, yeah? So basically, Ken then's like, I really want to ride one of these air car, uh, air cars or whatever. And mm-hmm. so he uh, he just takes one and goes joyriding. Now basically. this is cloud carring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, and they uh, and he goes and and then he gets pulled over by uh, by a cop on Bespin who like notices this this kid says his name is Ken and uh, and. And so, and there's that Jedi prince that's named Ken that's wanted right now. So, by Trioculus, you know, who we apparently deal with on Bespin, no problem. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so they take him in, uh, and yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he he gets taken to Zorba. So meanwhile, Princess Leia. This is on page. 
1855 was in Trioculus's private chamber. We failed to mention that uh, Trioculus, his real motivations here. Oh yeah. I mean, he has he has to get Ken because of the Supreme Prophet's uh, Caden's uh, prophecy that the Jedi Prince will destroy him. But he's got another mission. He wants to make Princess Leia queen of the Empire. So. Uh, Princess Leia is here in Trioculus's private chambers, high up in the tallest of his factories. The room had modern imperial art and elegant furniture. And on page 57 in the illustration, we can see some of this modern imperial art. And uh, I would call it interesting at best. Uh, so. <laughs> I wouldn't call it interesting at all, is what I would say. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, well, there's kind of like looks- Ben Grimm over here, maybe? I was just going to say it's like uh, Ben Grimm <laughs> As the thinker, Ben Grimm or uh, Concrete, the Paul Chadwick uh, mm-hmm. character, you know, no, it shouts to uh, Concrete, uh, classic '90s comic book. Yeah, it looks but, like there's some I don't know 3D printed thing over here on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, true. so anyway, 3D printing, so funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so, so Trioculus he tries to lay on the moves hard on Leia and don't forget he's all scarred now because scarred like he got form. burned one- yeah scarred into <laughs> form because he got all he got all burned uh whenever he tried burning down the forest on Yavin it left him um, scarred yes and scarred different. and disfigured yeah. um so um he tries to convince her that Luke is dead and she says, I don't believe a word you're saying, Leia snapped. I would know it if Luke were dead. I would feel it. Perhaps Par- not. Down here, by the Rethin Sea, <laughs> feelings are dulled. All feelings. That is, except my feelings for you, Leia. <laughs> He's as horny as his shoulder pads. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, yeah. and uh, for, uh, and later on, this is where he try he tries to make another move here. This is where Trioculus he's like, maybe if I touch her, that'll you oh, know yeah. that'll yeah, get sure. it going. That's, so, that's how that so, works. <laughs> yeah, so Trioculus glanced down in his right hand, which now wore a replica of the glove of Darth Vader. He wondered if he should put on that gloved hand on her shoulder to show his affection for her. There can be still great beauty in a, a dark heart, Trioculus said, reaching out with the glove and gently touching her. The princess pulled away at once. I'm certain there's darkness in you, Leia, he oh. continued. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, that's like fucking something that Daniel Desario on Freaks and Geeks would say to get in some girls. Like, <laughs> that's like some straight teen boy, like bad boy shit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yep. there's darkness in you. And and, and on the <laughs> final page of this chapter, he, he says, I love you, Leia, he said in a fiery voice. I want to marry, I want you to marry me and become queen of the Empire. Uh, so he is, he just doesn't give up. He's laying it on thick. It's such a like weak attempt at moral ambiguity that they're making here when he gives this speech about like, oh, there's darkness in her. Uh, and and she, he goes on to lecture her about like, the you know times that she's felt anger and hate in her heart and stuff like that uh and uh it, it, it just it seems it rings very false in the same series where villains greet each other with the phrase dark greetings oh yeah dark greetings everybody we forgot <laughs> yeah we forgot to say it <laughs> dark greetings uh, you can go and edit it which back I in <laughs> i don't think that's said in this book though that's why i forgot yeah, about yeah, it's it not nobody said. says dark greeting yeah, disrespectful honestly to the legacy of the series um, it's, it's, it's like, it's like when Ryan Johnson didn't say I've got a bad feeling about this in his movie, the, the, the most important element of Star Wars. I'm, whatever. Yeah. Did I'm people, fine with I, that. obviously I'm fine with that. I'm making fun of these. Were people upset about that? <laughs> yeah, people were very mad. Oh, really? I completely missed my notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are these are the people who are also pissed about. I got a good feeling about this. So well, that's solo. worse than not doing it, in my opinion. <laughs> Agreed. That's much cornier and more self conscious. But whatever, no shots. You know, I like Solo. Relax. I know you're the biggest Solo fan on the planet. It's your number I, I, I three have, Star Wars movie. I have to. I have to rep it. I can't. I mean, it's not number three, but it's it number is three. You're there. like, you're just like, hmm, a Phantom Menace, number one, uh, <laughs> and then Solo because they both have Darth Maul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
unbelievable truth. <laughs> That's Saeed level truth there. I can't believe you guys brought the Saeed is so true thing onto the podcast. Like anybody is going to understand what the hell that means. We explained it. We explained, we explained it. it. Yeah. All right. Anybody who watches Lost would agree. Yeah. They would, they would look into his like, eyes yeah. and be like, agree. Truth. That's all I think truth. of when I see him is truth. <laughs> Oh. God, good lord. Um, he's like Paul Pierce. He's the truth. Uh, yeah, there's a basketball reference again. Oh, uh, yeah, you're our, our one basketball reference. All right. <laughs> moving, moving on. So Zorba, he he is uh, he um, he thinks that this Ken character, because this kid they captured named Ken, he needs to know that this kid, this Ken is the same Ken who is the Jedi Prince Ken. So the way he does this is uh, he uh, drugs Ken with uh, like a truth serum mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, but I want to read a little bit here. It's on page 62. But old huts like Zorba knew a lot about human child psychology. Why? <laughs> Why would a hut know about human child psychology? Only old huts. Like, only like that generation huts of know. huts like studied... Child psychology a lot. I guess be, I guess a lot like the the Paul Davids and Paul and Hollis Davis generation. They studied some version of pop sci- child psychology, very popular in the eighties and nineties. So, for for aging so boomers. I, so uh, <laughs> so yeah, he uh, he drugs Ken with the truth serum and gets him to tell him that he is indeed the Jedi Prince. So Zorba contacts. Um, Trioculus tells him I have Ken and he also knows that um, Trioculus has Princess Leia and of course this is Zorba the Hutt's revenge. Zorba wants revenge for the death of his son so he wants Leia dead. So of course you would think there would be some sort of a easy fair trade here but no there's not because of course trioculus uh wants to make uh princess leia his and queen Zorba also wants trioculus to leave the planet because uh, because all the braze the braze is is, yeah. is is uh repelling tourists yeah so. and he can't have that because he he's the new governor yeah. of this planet Wait, did you just... mention that uh zorba was Having like uh, his bounty hunter pal bring Ken like cupcakes or some shit like <laughs> yeah that's how that's how he drug Ken yeah yeah it's like cupcakes. a it's like a shitty version of uh, Edmund and the White Witch in Lion the Witch oh, and the yeah, Wardrobe yeah, with the yeah, Turkish yeah, delight the Turkish yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh love it oh. so so I, yeah one other thing I want to just say before we get into the end game here is that. Um, the uh, um, you know, the thing with Leia, like getting getting revenge on Leia for Jabba's death, uh, in the Claudia Gray book Bloodline, which takes place six years before Force Awakens, so you know, it's in the new canon. They uh, just imagine that different stuff happened after it. Yeah, sure, but um, she's known uh, throughout the galaxy's underworld as the Hut Slayer, which is hard <laughs> as fuck. Uh, and like into every generation, a hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all the greatest hits, <laughs> all the great TV references. We need to get some Mad Men references oh, in here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, I guess Han is chasing the same dream and coming up empty as Don Draper does in Mad Men. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got it, it, his. He his has the mid, He has my... the classic mid-century, like post-war, uh, you know, dream Amer- American dream that is like, like can maybe be achieved but can never fulfill you. So. Mm-hmm. And dream, and Han's dream sky house has a very modern kind of uh, uh you know mid-century modern look to it's it. Like, uh, it's like Don's uh, apartment later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his and Megan's apartment. Megan's apartment. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Zooby zooby zoo, indeed. Uh, so, <laughs> I love. Her. We're definitely endearing ourselves. To oh yeah, I'm sure they love this. All these non-Star Wars digressions. All right. Um, <laughs> Well, you should give them some credit. I'm sure that your audience likes other things besides I know Star they Wars. Do, but sometimes, you know, I, I listen. We've had a great interaction with basically everybody in our audience. I like we haven't really had any negative experiences with our audience because we have a fairly small audience. 
But, yeah, uh, except that one dude on Instagram who I had to block because he was dissing Rose. But that's, oh yeah, well that's, you know who you yeah, are, yeah. dude. <laughs> well, he definitely doesn't listen. Never listened. I feel like, but the um, but regardless, <laughs> uh, you know, I just judging from the way you know other fans of other podcasts are, they they get so mad when the show any show deviates even slightly from what they're supposed to be. So I don't want to you know alienate uh, our tens of listeners. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get uh, back to the book. <laughs> okay, so um, Zorba and Trioculus, um, there's a big shootout. Uh, Trioculus uh, brings in his stormtroopers. Uh, Zorba brings in the Cloud City Police. And uh, even though they are the Empire, um, <laughs> they are overwhelmed by the Cloud City Police. Well, because, like, and, uh, isn't... These books don't acknowledge that the Empire has been weakened dramatically. Yeah. At the very mm-hmm. least. Uh, it, it's very weird. much Much as the uh, sequel trilogy does not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, these books have more in common with that sequel trilogy than people realize. Well, they're in the they same really kit do. continuity. Triclops, the true son of Emperor Palpatine, <laughs> that's Ray's dad. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> We never saw the. I mean, tr- I mean, spoiler alert. We know that tr- uh, Triclops' eye is on the back of his neck. Right. So maybe, maybe Ray's dad has an eye on the yeah. back of his neck. Yep, he does. Mm-hmm. He does. It's maybe be Ray real. has Can't that wait. same eye. <laughs> Oh, um, so what the hell happened here? Oh, right Ken now. escapes. Uh, it's such a bummer. So. <laughs> Ken anyway, escapes. Uh, he 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 mind tricks the guard and he gets out of his jail cell, and uh, he hails a cab, uh, yes. and he goes back to Han's sky house. Yeah, he mind tricks yep. the uh, cabbie too. Yeah, that's yep. true. He has no trouble yes, doing he that. Did. Yeah, which you know, no hey, problem. hey, hey, I bet all these people were fine with Ken. Being able to do the mind trick, and they're like so pissed about Ray doing it in Force Awakens. <laughs> uh, I'm and, joking. Uh, I'm joking. I have no problem with Ray doing it in Force Awakens. It's bad here because Ken is a uh, bad character. He's not a character. He's who nothing. I, who I can't invest in, and can't invest in their ability to adapt to the Force quickly. Like that's the reason it's fine with Ray because you like Ray. You're like I, and you believe in her goodness and her ability and her ability to channel that in that moment because she's a good character. Uh, uh, Ken is straight up Wesley Crusher stuff. You know, to I mentioned that earlier, but you know, you know who Wesley Crusher is? Nope. Star Trek Next Generation, terrible okay. kid character, sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically... Um, Leia escapes. Leia escapes. Leia br- she smashes a window. Luke finds her with Kate, and uh, Han picks him up in the Falcon. And then, uh, so they're driving away. And then Zorba's bounty hunter cronies and oh, uh, the Zorba thing. Express uh, they <laughs> blow up Trioculus's barge. And then they and... basically they freeze Trioculus in carbonite. Yes, they do. Yeah, Zorpa captures Trioculus and does that to him. And then I uh, really like the Carl Kessel illustration of Trioculus and Carbonite. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Right. I'm not yeah. even it's joking. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I might be using that for something. I, 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 I love it. So basically, yeah. then they cut that. So uh, Zorba thinks that Leia is dead. But Leia's back on the Falcon, obviously, so they're, they they got to leave the planet, because if, if Zorba finds out that Leia's alive, then he's going to come after her again. So they are, they're on, they, they leave the planet, everybody's on the Falcon, and, and Han has to leave behind his dream sky house, and um, there's a bit here where it's like, yeah, um, Luke took control of the acceleration lever, and Han gave Princess Leia a kiss, a very long kiss. While he was kissing Princess Leia, a crazy thought popped into Han Solo's mind. Maybe he should propose marriage to her. Maybe it was about time he popped the question. But what would he say exactly? Senator Leia Organa, could you ever love a mischievous Corellian pilot like me enough to say, I do, at the altar? No. Too stiff and formal. How about the simple approach? Princess, will you marry me? Nope. Too short. Not enough affection. What about... Leia, 
Will you be my wife and the mother of my children? No. Too old-fashioned. It was a tough problem. A very tough problem indeed. No doubt about it, he would have to wait until some other day to figure out how to say the words in just the right way. Or the day after some other day. Actually, reasonably decent turn of phrase there. Yeah, the uh, first <laughs> instance that any... The first uh, hint that any effort was put into the prose whatsoever. <laughs> um, and that's basically how the book ends. They, they're, they're off on their, uh, on their way to do something. Uh, uh, they, they, they're, they, they're like, they're not going to go back to, uh, Yavin 4 and, uh, uh, and, uh, so... Yeah, Han says that he's got some place in mind, but he never says we, where we don't, is. We don't know where, he, so. Yeah, so, like, we're, we're left no, uh, Dream Sky house, they have to leave that behind, uh... And uh, Han doesn't propose marriage. This is truly the uh, Empire Strikes Back of this series. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, a character gets frozen in carbonite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> so dark. <laughs> Just like Empire Strikes Back, so dark. <laughs> you, you know, it, on a, on a, to, to digress once again, uh, you know what I could stand to never hear any like writer or director or actor ever say again this is like the empire strikes back of our series i i, I would like to never hear yeah. anybody ever say I've that again they started pivoting even more comically to this is the godfather 2 no oh, good I lord i hearing that and it's like guess what no it's not the godfather 2 nobody's lying about an abortion in your avengers movie shut the fuck up <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I want to quickly uh, mention something I just read uh, in the glossary. Of course, the, every one of these books has a glossary, and I just want to read here uh, the the definition for braze. A word that is short for brown haze, much as the word smog in short for smoke and fog. Good job. <laughs> Couldn't have just been smog. No, that's too earthbound an idea. Um, but let's talk. Uh, we're talking about earthbound ideas, Luke leaves a note at the car rental place because he doesn't return the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So yeah, th- these books continue to be completely absurd. I. I gotta say, I had a decent time with this one just because the goofiness started reaching like such insane levels. Uh, that doesn't mean it's good at all. It's still gonna get a solid zero out of ten for me, <laughs> no problem. But I had a much better time with it than the last two. Maybe that's just because I wasn't taking as many copious notes, uh, uh, so it didn't feel like as much of a chore. I read it in like forty-five minutes or an hour or something. So, uh, but. Yeah, these books are are so ridiculous. They seem to have no concern for the Star Wars universe, which to some degree, I guess, is like kind of fun. That doesn't mean that they're good at all. I, I, I'm just mm-hmm. saying the irreverence of them is like very unusual in Star Wars fiction. So it's like it is completely unique. Like there is really nothing else this unsupervised, this unlike unthought through that's ever been published under the Star Wars name. I don't think there's ever been anything else like this. So it is like Well, totally what about unique. Join the Resistance? Oh, wow. Yeah, but Join the Resistance, like, even though it, like, its ideas and morals about Star Wars are, like, completely wrong, still feels like it's in the Star Wars mm. universe. This, or at least, this the one, like, at least what's, like, it, it feels like it's part of an initiative. It feels like there right. was oversight on it to some degree. That fart scene, you think, feels like there was oversight on Listen, it? Listen, it, it's the closest thing. You're right. It is the closest thing uh, since then. But um, this feels completely unsupervised. Like, they could just do basically whatever they wanted to. And it, and like and that they put l- no effort into it whatsoever. It like, definitely feels like that way. they wrote it over a drunken weekend at <laughs> Catalina or something. You know, it's like, <laughs> like it, 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 I can't believe how bad the writing is. Like, it, it, like I mean, it's the most like blandly journalistic prose I've ever read in my life in a novel. Like, I I just can't believe like. 
some of the stuff in here, like it's like the way they describe action, very terrible. Like it, it's just so schematic. Uh, and then he jumped down the shaft, and then he pulled out his lightsaber, and then he yeah, is just the, the way most... they reveal backstory. It's not revealed; it's just like dumped on. You. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's written mm-hmm. with the grace of a Wikipedia article. It's yes. Yeah, it, it... <laughs> Um, that that might be an insult to Wikipedia. No, yeah, yeah, listen, I read some from Wiki- Wikipedia back during the draft earlier this episode, and I think it's better writing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's very, very poor. Like, it's an easy zero out of ten for me. But, uh, Dan, why don't, you, uh, why don't you give us your final thoughts here? Well, I, I, you know, I, I'm having a hard time because... I can't decide if this is better or worse than the previous books. Uh, it's, I mean, it's terrible. But Ken sucks, but he's completely sidelined. He does nothing. Yeah, but, I mean, that might make it worse, like, objectively speaking. Right, yeah. It's it, But, like, but we're, there's a little, uh, like, less of Ken than there was in the it's previous maybe book. maybe less aggressively bad because of that but yeah and then nothing happens in it other than han solo's house party that's the main takeaway from the book i mean and (laughs) and then and then unceremoniously at the end the primary villain of the entire series gets frozen in carbonite yeah it's ridiculous there's three more books yeah we got a lot to go so i have no idea what they're going to be about especially since one's called queen of the empire i'm going to guess that trioculus who on the cover kind of looks like Dennis from 30 Rock. Uh, he is uh, um, he's gonna uh, get uh, he's gonna get thawed out I'm sure later on but I don't know it's um it's really bad I don't know how it stacks up against the previous ones I think that the shock of how bad this series is has subsided but yeah it, it, it's pretty awful I'm gonna give it a uh, I'm gonna give it a point five out of 10 oh. with a flavor of Zorba the Hut. I never got a chance to read Zorba's, uh, Zorba's voice from the novel, which is uh, sounds exactly like this. I have it on word from Paul and Hollis themselves. <laughs> Say something about getting revenge on Princess Leia. Princess Leia murdered my dear, dear son, Jabba the Hut, And... I will have my revenge. <laughs> I knew you were going to be like, I will have my revenge. <laughs> oh, oh, so, oh. Levi, Levi. All right. Oh, we're wrapping so, up with uh, Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, you mentioned, uh, Dan, you mentioned the Queen of the Empire thing. Yeah. I'm going to drop a scoop that I know about these books. Uh-oh. So, the contract... Paul Davis, Paul Davids, and Hollis Davids, they had a contract oh, I've, I've for six before, books. Yeah. yeah, for six books. However, there was an option for three more. So they plotted this series as a nine book series. However, by the time the fifth book came out, <laughs> they, the publisher had already told them, no, we're not like going, it's only going to be six <laughs> books. So they, so they had to rush rush a, a certain relationship they they have to wrap things up pretty quickly there oh i, so that's I happen little... to know already that it ends with uh the marriage of right yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah because it was retconned by courtship of princess leia okay? right right uh, written by dave wolverton well, yeah what? yeah wizard of storytelling represent the wizard of storytelling <laughs> who has han solo kidnap leia and listen, take her to <laughs> go back and listen to our very first episode to know learn more about the wizard of storytelling a jedi apprentice <laughs> number one the rising force anyway yeah, all right so anyway uh uh, you guys seem to hate Ken. I think Trioculus is the worst character because okay. he is su- yeah. he's supposedly the emperor, and he is the worst emperor possible. Uh, especially because, like, why would he not just invade Cloud City with stormtroopers and then just take Ken? Like, why is he bargaining with a hut? Like, he should just do it. And also, before he gets frozen in carbonite, this is on page eighty-two. He begs for his life. Like, he's practically on his knees. And he says to Zorba, We can still make a deal, Zorba, Trioculus said. I could share my power with you. You could become Grand Admiral of the Empire. And Zorba, he replied with a scowl, I I will rather join the Rebel Alliance <laughs> than raise the tip of my tail to help you. 
And now if you excuse me, I'm going to encase you in carbonite. Your body will be frozen and trapped. Your mind will be in constant torment. Zorba licked his cheeks with his tongue. Get ready. Get ready. (laughs) Get set. No! Zorba, stop! Go! Zorba (laughs) threw the switch. (laughs) Uh, So. uh, Oh ho ho ho! (laughs) That laugh! That laugh! It's the same every time. Oh ho ho ho! It's all caps. It reminds me very much of the way that, like... Oh, oh, on the illustration on the previous oh, yes. page, it has a uh, <laughs> written out Yeah, like a sound him. effect, yeah. It, oh, man, they're obsessed with onomatopoeia in these books. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> they, they spell out the, the, the R2 and, and Chewy dialogue. Uh, Anytime like, there's an explosion, you can better believe you're going to get a kawam or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so anyway, Trioculus is the worst, and I'm going to give this book a... I think this is the worst of the three, in my opinion. Okay. Not that I remember a whole lot of the previous books, but I think it's the worst one. I'm giving it a point two five flavored trioculus. Worst books of this whole series. All right, that's fair enough. Uh, listen, uh, we're going to come back and do uh, the fourth book of this, Mission to Mount Yoda, or Mission from Mission Mount from Yoda. Mount Yoda. Weird uh, preposition there, I think. Yeah, at some point, probably I don't know, maybe in a few months. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, but we're definitely we're committed to finishing this before the end of the podcast. So, uh, and Dan will be back for that, and we're, we'll try to have you back for a book that might not be terrible. <laughs> That'd be fun too. Uh, may, maybe we can make <laughs> that your fifth time on the show. We'll figure it out. All right. Um, mm-hmm. well, uh, but anyway, we'll uh, next week though we're going to be back to Jedi Quest with the False Peace number nine. Mm-hmm. Um, near the end of that series. So, uh, uh, yeah, tune back in for that next week. But in the meantime, if you want Chill, wanna... chill, chill. Okay, man, whatever. <laughs> uh, sorry. In the meantime, it, 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 like, listen, we got... Like, we want people to know where, where to find us, Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you can turn off the podcast now, if you know. <laughs> Do I have to say that in order to be... In, in order for it to be okay? Yeah. That, yeah sorry. Right. <laughs> anyway, you can uh, find us... On uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Padawan Library. You can email us at padawanlibrary at gmail.com. You can buy our t shirt <laughs> mm-hmm. until the books are due back. Our, that t shirt is on T Public. Uh, the link, uh, I'll keep posting a link in the descriptions of the episodes. So the link will be in the description. Uh, and you can probably find the link on all those social media platforms also. So. Uh, check that out. Uh, we're, we'll post some illustrations from this book, some of the funnier illustrations on Instagram for sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Hashtag Galactic Senate Draft 2020 until the books are due back. The library is closed. Padawan Library is hosted and produced by Tim May and Levi Paratic. It is edited by Tim May. Our theme song is by The Astral Project. Our artwork is by Freddie Funbuds. Copyright 2020, Tim May and Levi Paratic. All rights reserved.